Shabbat Shalom, Bayet Yisrael Yair. This is another wonderful time, another Yom that Yahweh has locked us with, that we may continue to walk in all of His ways and all of His commandments, observing and remembering Yisrael, His covenants that He has made with our fathers and the covenant that He has made made through Yahshua HaMashiach, that by and through him we have remission of sin, but not only that, we have the promises, we have the kingdom, we have the right to the throne, Yisrael, the right to rule, and to instruct and to judge all things. So I told you all way for this day, for this Yom, for this Shabbat. They even, have, even though we have labored through this week, Israel, at this time we're able to rest in Him, that our minds will rest and have confidence in Him, our hearts, Israel, being complete on this Yom in Him. So it's an excellent time. It's an excellent, excellent Yom for us to be alive, Israel. And to see the thing that Yahweh is opening up unto us as a people, His Torah, His words, our sins and our iniquities as He reprove and remind us, as He instructs us, as He corrects us, Israel, Yael, in the way, the straight and narrow path unto righteousness, the kingdom, the judgment. That we as a nation and as a people, that we may excel, that we may multiply the blessings that Yahweh has given unto us, that we may be a blessing unto all the nations, Israel, that Yahweh may barak us with his better kaya, that we may baruch all the nations, the world, and especially the house of Israel. So Shabbat. To you all, nation, be encouraged, continue to persevere, to stand strong with our feet planted, secure, that we are rooted Israel, knowing that our foundation that holds us is all the promises we have, the testimony that we have Israel, and our tigva especially. In Yahshua HaMashiach. There's no other way. There's no other name by which we can be Barak. And there's no other way, Yisrael, that our sins will be forgiven and forgotten. But by the Dom of Yahshua HaMashiach that was shed for us. So I do want to continue in this path, this way. The direct, the direction the Torah, concerning the way. But I want to express it in another fashion, if I may. That it shows Yahweh, His possession, His way, His path, His elect, His anointed, His people, He Describes, and he says it this way, my, M-Y, my. It shows a connection. It shows a possession, Yisrael. And it also shows Icha, there's a oneness. There is a relationship. There's an understanding, Yisrael. So we must understand, and Yada, that is to know what Yahweh's will is for us. That we as his am, his nation, could walk as Yahweh speaks in all of my ways, in all of my path, because you are my people. My people. So let me read the definition of my, that we may have understanding, Israel. Now, many of you will say, well, I know what my means, but let me read what the Marion Webster has to say concerning my and the possession and adjective. It says here, of a relationship. So there's a relationship. There's correlation. There, 
there there are things that uh, are the same that are relatable of or relationship to me myself especially as a possessor it belongs to me it is mine I have a relationship. I have a covenant. It also says a agent, object of action, or familiarity, a familiar person. My, my car, as an example, my injuries, my man, my woman, my brother. There are my possession, there is a relationship. We share. We share our thoughts, our mind, our hearts, our possessions. That I can deem rightfully, it is mine. My brother, my sister. But Yahweh speaks as my people. My way. Walk in my ways. So he always shows that it is his. His possession. That there is a relation because it belongs to him. So he expresses my mind. So that's why I teach upon those lines. That realm. Concerning as Yahweh express my people. My ways. My path. So if you would turn with me for a moment. As we. For a moment here in Torah. Scripture at Shema Yisrael. That it may be a teaching. That may encourage or love your heart. And to give us something just to. A little nourishment. Until we receive the full meal. Yisrael. Of the Yom of the day. So speaking in Romeo. That is Romans chapter 9, verse 25. Hallelujah. Way. And I left my house, my bed, without my glasses. But that's all right, Israel. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. It says here, Romeo, Romans chapter 9, verse 25. As he, who? Yahweh. As he says in Hosea. So there is a correlation in Hosea. Which speaks this very same thing. Yahweh. As he says in Hosea. I will call them my people. My people. Showing a possession. Showing there is something of relation. Correlation there. He says my people in Hosea. As it says here. We are in Romeo chapter 9 verse 25. He said they are mine. As I have spoken in Hosea. They belong to me. This is my nation. This is my people. As he speaks to us, Israel. As he shows us his ways, his thoughts, his will, his desire, that we may understand, that we may yada know Israel. All that he wants of us in his last and evil days. So he shows the possession saying, my people, my nation, as it says here in Romeo chapter 9, verse 25. And Yahweh, he doesn't make any mistake. He said that for a reason. To show the possession to show the relationship Israel 
that this people belongs to me and no one else. They are called by my name and no one else. Hallelujah. For we are Yisrael, his nation. So he says this because it is found in Hosea. I will call them my people, which were not my people. He said there was a time whereby they were not mine. Or in the understanding, told our son. Yes, sir. Come here, Dawi. My son brought me my glasses. This is Dawi. Yisrael. Say shalom, Dawi. Shalom. All right. You know, you're live on the broadcast. Everyone sees you that are listening tonight. Yes, sir. Told for bringing my glasses, son. Alright, shalom, shalom. Hallelujah. So Yahweh here is tough, and his hot seats, his hot seat endures throughout all generations. Hallelujah. To the uh. Alright. So as he speaks here, Romeo chapter 9, verse 25, as it says here in Hosea, I will call them my people, which were not my people. Now you must understand, Yahweh he yada, he knows we are his people. But we did not yada him, yet he knew us, he yada us, he knows us, he knows our maker. He knows that this yom, that you are his Israel. But we did not know, we were not a people. We were not a people with understanding and knowledge of Yahweh the Most High, our Abba. He said, I'll call you my people, which were not my people. Not a divine, but yet have been grafted in, have been brought in Israel, grafted in, a nation, yet strangers unto Yahweh our Abba. But he has made us a part of the whole. Of the message of his desire, Israel, and his will. That's what Yahweh has done. Which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not, not beloved. We had no Ahava, but yet we were beloved, which were not her beloved. It says here, verse 26, And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said to them, remember, it speaks this also in Hosea, it shall come to pass that in the place it was said to them, you are not my people. You have not known me. You have not known me by my name, Yahweh, which sits high and he looks low. He's the beginning and the end, the first, the last. You are not my people. They should not be called the ch children of the living Yahweh. He said, they shall be called, oh we, there they shall be called the children of the living Yahweh, or Abba. Verse 27. Isaiah also cries concerning Israel, through the number of the children of Israel, be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be delivered. So he said, even though Nation, O Yisrael, and the promise that he has made even with Abraham, saying that nations shall rise out of his bosom, and it shall be as the sands of the sea, but yet there is a remnant, there is a chosen and elect of a people unto Yahweh that he calls my people. So just because you say you are Hebrew, 
Hebrews or Hebrew Israelites or Yisrael Yahim, it doesn't mean that as Yahweh speaks, that we are, as he speaks, my people. So, let me say it this way unto us. We proclaim that we are the nation, we are the people. That we are the elect of Almighty Yahweh. He calls us my people. May I ask, as being his, he speaks, he calls us because he possesses us. We are his, my people, and we being in the people, are we not? He's talking to you, he's talking to me. The reason why I'm going in this direction, because I have to point this out. So we are his people. He calls us my people. That's who we are. That's who you are. You claim the name. So we must walk in his ways, right? He says, walk in my ways. May I ask, do you? Let me ask myself, walk in his ways. Because we are his people. We must walk in his ways. All of his ways. Are we walking in all of his ways? That's where the dividing line comes. That's where we are of the nation. But are we the my people? Let me read on. He said you are people... That were not my people. They shall be called the children of the living Yahweh. Moving on to verse 27. Isaiah also cries concerning Israel, Yael. Listen to what he says again. Though the number of the children of Israel, Yael, be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be delivered. Verse 28. For he shall finish the work and cut it short in righteousness. Because a short work will Yahweh make upon the earth. It will be short. It will be quick and crisp. He will not prolong the time. Yisrael Yael. That's why we must know. We must yada. That we are my people, the people he is talking about. Hallelujah. Way. Hallelujah. Way. He knows those that are his, Israel. Verse 29, he says this. And as Israel, and as Isaiah did say before, except Yahweh of Hashabah. Of Shabba had left us a zira, a remnant, my people. We would have been as Sodom and made like Gomorrah. There would be a, a total annihilation, a decimation, wiped out, wiped clean. There would be nothing left except Yahweh. Spare the zira, the seed of Israel that he chosen and he elected my people. He says, my people. Now let me move forward. Let me make the next step in this teaching, this message, Israel. As it was describing more in Romeo chapter 9, verse 25, it says this, as he says in Hosea, right? I will call them my people which were not my people. Let us go to Hosea. And let us see that this is true. Hosea. This is the word of Hosea. Because we are been our unfaithful people. Unrighteous people before Yahweh. But yet Yahweh, he is faithful. Hosea chapter 2 verse 20. I want to read here. He says, I will then betroth 
I will make a covenant. There's a joining. There's a binding. Now remember, M-Y, my, the possession, the relationship. Here it is. I will then betroth you to me in faithfulness. Yahweh is faithful. We have not been faithful, Israel. We have played the role of a whore. A whore. And we have gone a whoring. Show our ways. But yet Yahweh, he is faithful. Aren't you glad Yahweh is faithful? I know I am. That he is faithful to redeem, to correct, to restore, to remind us, to set us in our place, Yisrael. He says, my people. My way, all of my ways. Let me continue. It shall come to pass that in that day, let me back up. I don't want to get ahead of myself tonight, this Eve. Hosea 2 and 20. Let me read that. I won't go to 2 and 21. I will even betroth you to me in faithfulness, and you shall yada, you shall know me. Not just my name, not just my power, not just my possessions, but you will know, you will yada, there will be a relationship, a oneness, we will be joined together by faithfulness, he says, verse 21, it shall come to pass that in that day I will hear, saith Yahweh, I will hear the Hashemayim, the heavens, and they shall hear. He said, they shall hear the earth. And the earth shall hear the corn and the wine and the oil. And they shall hear Yazael. And I will show her to me in the earth. And I will have kindness upon her that had not obtained kindness. I have not attained kindness. We have done anything worthy of kindness. We have not obtained it. But yet he will show us kindness, he says. And I will say to them which were not my people, you are. Why? Because I have betrothed you. I have made a covenant unto you. I am a covenant by faithfulness. I have Zakar remembered the promises and the covenant I have made with your fathers. And I have not left you desolate. He says, I will say to them which were not my people, you are my people. Did not, not, did not Romeo say that concerning Hosea? Which was before Romeo or Romans? That in that chapter, it was able to, to uh, remember and correlate that which was spoken in Hosea before Romeo. He said, you have to obtain kindness. And I would say to them that were not my people, you are my people. And they shall say, you are my Abba. There's only one nation that can say that and that can proclaim that. And may claim that Yahweh is Abba, our Abba, only those that Yahweh calls and proclaims that they are my people. I want to move on to the promises in Zechariah chapter 2. Zechariah chapter 2. So we must understand. His ways, His path, that we are His people. He says we are His people, my people, my ways, my path. These are the promises unto Yahweh, of Yahweh, for my people. Zechariah 2 and 10 says, Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion. 
For lo, I come, I appear, I draw near to you, and I will dwell in the midst of you, saith Yahweh. He said, I will dwell in the midst of you. I will remain. I will make my abode, my home, my place with you, saith Yahweh. Verse 11. And many nations shall be joined to Yahweh in that day and shall be my people. So he said many nations, did he not? Did I not read that he says concerning Jerusalem, Israel, Yael, that there is a remnant, there is a seed, there is a zira. And this speaks as that zira, that seed, out of every nation. He says, And many nations shall be joined to Yahweh in that day. It shall be my people. M Y, so in the possession. I Yada, I know them. They are mine. And I will dwell in the midst of you, and you shall know that Yahweh of hosts has sent me to you. Why? Because we are his people. He said, my people. My people. Yeshua said that my sheep will hear my voice. So there is a relationship. There's ownership. Yisrael Israel As being called one. Verse 12. And Yahweh shall inherit Yehuda, his portion. His possession. In the Kodesh land, it shall choose Jerusalem again. Why? He could have chosen any people, any nation. But he knows, he yada, that this is my people. They have turned. They have walked away, but yet I have made a covenant by faithfulness. I have spoken it to be so that they are my people. So there's things that we possess, that we have, that we want, that we don't want. But yet when it's revealed to you and it's shown who is this, who does this belong to, you have to confess with truth now. That's mine. And that's what Yahweh has done. Because we are his Israel. We are his nation, his people. He will not destroy us. But we must continue in all of his ways. He said, these are my ways. Walk in my paths. Israel. And I will direct you in the way that you must go. Moving on. Zechariah chapter 2 verse 13 says, Be silent, be still, be quieted. O all flesh before Yahweh, for he is raised up out of his Kodesh habitation. So he has raised up, he has stood up, Israel. And once the master stands up, as Torah speaks, and shuts to the door, no man can open it. Yahweh opens the door, no man can shut it. But yet in this hour, he rises up, Israel. We must know who we are, where we are, and who Yahweh is. Because you don't want to be on the other side of that, not my people. But you want to be that people that he talks that is, belongs to him, that is mine, his possession. He has shown us the way. He has shown us the light, Israel. And let us walk therein. Let us obey his commandments. Let us walk in all of his ways. As he directs us in this straight and narrow path to righteousness, Israel. So there is a way that something is right unto man, but the end thereof is death. When it is finished, it brings forth death. 
So let us, as Yahweh speaks of my people, choose those things which will bring life, which will bring health, wealth unto your navel, unto the nephesh, and the body as well, Yisraelia. Let me continue on concerning here in your L, Joel, chapter 2. Two verse 23 concerning the former and the latter reign. How Yahweh will barak and bless Israel and his people. He says here, be glad then. Be glad. You children of Zion and rejoice. We must rejoice. It is a tough thing to give Todah praise unto Yahweh. Give Todah unto Yahweh your Abba and rejoice, for he has given you the former reign moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the reign, the former reign, and the latter reign in the first month. The former and the latter rain, the falling, the revelation of his Ruach HaKodesh, even as we prepare for Pentecost, Yisrael. Yahweh, his promise as he speaks concerning his Ruach HaKodesh, it shall rain. He has given us those things that are of the former. But especially in these times, the things of the latter years, Yair, that we may know him, that we may yada him. So he has given us the former and the latter rain in the first month. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. That's what happens with his royal hakodesh when it falls, when it rains upon us. It fills us. It fills the vats. It fills the jars. It fills the wine bottles, Yisrael, and it overflows the wine and the oil. And I will restore the years that the locust has eaten. Have not the locust eaten upon us sin? Our rebellion to Yahweh, which causes a canker. That all it does is takes from you. It takes away. It doesn't add Yisrael in. It consumes. It overcomes its host. He said he will restore that Yisrael in, which the locusts have eaten. And the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm. My. Great army which I have sent among you. So he has sent these things because of our wickedness and our rebellion against him, sinning, transgressing his Torah. And yes, these things are great armies. They seem small, don't they? But yet, in vast numbers, they can consume so much, Israel. You don't want them in your grain and, 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 and things of that nature, your corn, because they will eat and devour. You would go in. To the storage, and it would seem like you have plenty, but yet when you take of the corn, there's nothing but husk. It's just a shell. Because they eat the meat, Yisrael, his great army. He goes on to say, And you shall eat in plenty. This is the blessings upon. Yahweh's people now. He says, my people. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. That's one thing about a nourishing meal. You don't have to eat until your gut pops, until your tummy hurts, as the children would say. But, but you eat until there's a contentment. There's a fullness that's not overbearing. You're content. Of which you have partaken of. You will eat in plenty and be satisfied. 
and hallelujah, there will be praises, and a cassandra of Todah, unto Yahweh our Abba. He says, and praise the name of Yahweh your Abba, that has dealt wondrously with you. He has dealt wondrously with us. I, I can look back and, and ask the question, why? Why me? You have chosen me. You've been so tough to me. Put me in a tough place. Those who love me and hover me. Why? Because we are his people. He says again, I've dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. We have nothing to be ashamed of, Israel. If we have shame and there is shame, it's because there is something in us that is not of Yahweh. And it brings a shame. It calls us to be shameful. But he said, my people should never be ashamed. And you should know, Yada, that I am in the midst of Yisrael. And that I am Yahweh, your, your Abba. So we can say, my Abba. In the same fashion, the same light of that understanding that Yahweh, he belongs to us. He's our Abba. That's my Abba. I am your Abba. And there is none else. And my people shall never. You hear that? We should never be ashamed. We should never be caught up in, 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 in the way that. What we do. What we say. How we live. What we stand for. As Yahweh speaks and teaches us. What we know. We should never be ashamed of that Israel. It should never be a cause for us to. Be ashamed. First Baruch, as I move on, this Eve, Yahweh calls, he says, my people. He recalls his people to hear in these times, in this hour. First Baruch, chapter 2, and verse 30. Look what he says here. Baruch, First Baruch, chapter 2, verse 30. For I knew. Hear that? For I knew that they would not hear me. Who's he talking about? The wicked? Those who are not my people? Who is Yahweh talking to and about here? For I knew they would not hear me. Because it is a stiff neck people. Oh, that's not me. I'm not stiff. -neck. Yes, you are. Yes, I am. We are his people. Who are we not? He says, my people. Watch what he says here as I continue. But in the land of their captivities. That's why we have so many captivities. We're bound. We can't move. We can't think right. Do right. We want to keep the days, the feasts of Yahweh. And it's hard to because we have not obeyed him, the Israel. We have held captive. We're in captivity. But in the land of their captivity, he says, they shall remember themselves. They will remember the wickedness, the unfaithfulness, the unkindness to brothers, sisters, Akim, Mahokim. They will remember themselves. They will remember their corruption and their corrupt ways. The corrupt things they say and think. Either they will remember themselves. And I shall and shall know Yada. They shall remember Israel that I am Yahweh. Look what he says. 
there Almighty. We'll look. We will remember ourselves and our sins and our wickedness. Knowing there's nothing and no place we can go but unto Yahweh. The revelation and of our wickedness and our filthiness will cause us, it should cause us, to turn back unto him, Yisrael, to his shoe. We have gone away from him, and these things cause us to see ourselves, to know ourselves, and know that we are nothing without Yahweh our Abba, that it is he that provides all the things that we need, Imuna, Tigva, Patience, kindness, all of these things, temperance. It will cause us to yada, to judge ourselves, to know ourselves, Israel. Let me continue. And it should call up for my name and return, he says, from their stiff neck and from their wicked deeds. We have to return. We have to shub Yisrael unto Yahweh our Abba. Forget all these things, our wicked ways, our wicked deeds, our stiffness of our neck, Yisrael. We must put all of these things to the side, these attributes to the side. For they shall remember the way of their fathers. It will cause us to ponder, to think, to recall. And we will remember the ways of our fathers, which have sinned before Almighty Yahweh. Verse 23. First Baruch 2 and 24. And I will bring them again. So for you to come to a place again, you have to have been there before. Because you can't return. Turn there and be there again unless you have already been there. So there's a place we have been, that we were with Yahweh our Abba. That closeness, that bond, that oneness, and we fell from that because we should, we turned from Him. As I repeat, I told Yahweh for His faithfulness. When I have fallen short and have not been faithful yet, the covenant has been made because of His faithfulness, Yisrael. We should tell Yahweh for that. We should barak him for that, Yisrael. Yisrael. That he is faithful. He is kind. He is gentle. He is compassionate. He rules with both wisdom and judgment, Yisrael, Yisrael. For the nation. For his heart is pure towards us. Hallelujah. Yahweh. He harbors as much, Yisrael, Yisrael. And I will bring them again to the the land which I promised with the oath unto their fathers Abram, Yitzhak, and Jacob, and they shall be stewards of it. They'll guard it and watch it, keep it clean, keep it neat, keep it kodesh. They will be stewards of it, and I will increase them, I will multiply them, and they shall not, will not. Be ashamed. Are we ashamed? Because we dress different. We don't talk like the world. We don't look like the world. It's an amazing thing that when we go out and when we're out, people, the world see our children, they see us, especially the Ahokim. They dress the heads covered. And it's something so far out of the norm. There are others that have dresses and their heads are covered, but they don't attract the attention of the nation, the true house of Yisrael. So it's more than the dress, but it's the dress. It's the dressing of the mind. It's the dressing of the heart, Yisrael. It's our feet being shod and prepared. It's the breastplate of righteousness that we wear, Yisrael. It's our loins being girded with truth. That's what they see. Not just children and your average woman in a dress and head covering. But it denotes and proclaims so much 
that they just don't understand. They look, they smile, they grin, but they don't understand Israel. Yael. But they know that there's something different. They know that there's something that is beautiful and out of the norm. Israel. Yael. So yes, we should not be ashamed. We should not, Israel. Yael. So we should not be ashamed nor dismayed, as I move to verse 35. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them to be their almighty. I tell you all what he says, he calls us his people, my people. We must walk in all of his ways. He said, these are my ways, Israel. Yael. And I will get to that. And they shall be my, my people, and I will no more drive my people out of Israel. The land that I have given them. So he has given us writs. He has given us property, a possession, Israel. Yael, and he said he will no longer drive us out. He will not drive us away from his promises that he has elected for us. But there are things that we must do, Israel. Yael. We must please him in all of our ways. We must walk in all of his paths that he deemed my ways, my path. That we may maintain and sustain the rich, his profit, his possession. That's given unto no other but Israel. Only Israel. He has given it unto us, the land. Quickly, Isaiah. Chapter 26, verse 20 and 21. This is the promises of Almighty Yahweh, especially the promise of deliverance. His deliverance. Here, Isaiah 26, 20 and 21. Then I will move into Ezra. Chapter 2, verse 10. Hallelujah, Yahweh. He says here, Isaiah 26, 20. Come and look what it says next. My, my people. My people. I know you. I've raised you. I've led and guide, guided you. I have elected you. My covenants, my statutes, my ways, my Torah, my word. Are with you. Come, come, my people, enter into your chambers and shut your doors about you. Ah, oh, the doors, huh? The doors about you. Hide yourself as it were for a little moment. We must do this, Israel. You must hide ourselves. Close the closet. Close the door. Close the window. Don't let anything interfere with your life, your commitment towards our Abba, Yahweh. For a little while until the end of the nation, my anger, my judgment be overpassed. For behold, Yahweh comes out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall Disclose her blood. And shall no more cover her slain. You cannot hide sin, Israel. You cannot cover up blood. You cannot hide the slain. The things we have slain because of our iniquity and our injustice before Yahweh. It shall all be open and revealed before him, Israel. So why don't we just confess it now? Don't wait till then. Don't wait till after the indignation and the judgment of Yahweh has already passed. Let's confess those things now. While there is still yet time. While the Master he has not risen up and shut to the door. He has given us life. He's given us breath and opportunity. Time is right here to get this thing right. To get our hearts right. Our minds right. Our lives right before him. 
that he may lead us and direct us in his will. His way. He said, this is my will. This is my way. This is my path that I have designed for you. Walk in it. Who would not in their right mind not take a clear path that has been cut through the brush, the briars? You can see where you are putting your feet. Don't have to worry about snakes or anything of that nature. Because you can see there's been a way made for us. There's a beaten path that we could follow Israel in Yahshua. Ezra 3, chapter 2 and verse 10. I want to begin reading. This is the promise and promises again unto, unto my people. My people. He says, my people. Ezra 3, chapter 2, verse 10 says, Thus saith Yahweh to Ezra, Tell them, who? My people. They're mine. They're my possession, my inheritance, my allotment. They belong to me. Tell my people that I will give them the kingdom of Jerusalem, which I, whose was it? Wasn't it Yahweh's Israel? It belonged to him. Whom I will have given unto Israel. Verse 11. Moreover, I will take back to myself the splendor. It was Yahweh's from the beginning. But he gave it unto us, Israel, because we are his. Is that not what a wife and a husband do? They don't have things they deem, this is mine, this is mine. You took that, that's mine. But yet there is a possession, the possessions belong to them, they share them. They share them. What is mine is yours. What is yours is mine. Even unto half of my kingdom, as I said at times. But yes, Israel. He says here, Moreover, I will take back to myself their splendor, and I will give to these others the living tabernacles, which I have prepared for Israel. They shall have the tree of life, for an ointment of a sweet smelling fragrance. They should neither labor nor weary, nor be weary. They should have to labor, no hard labor, Israel. Yeah, the yoke is easy, the burden is light. Don't have to be weary. Israel yeah, verse 13. Go and you shall receive. Pray that your days be few, that they may be shortened. The kingdom is already prepared for you. So watch. So that's how we pray that the days be shortened. That we may enter into the kingdom. The Melchut. The rest. The place Israel. That Yahweh has made for only my people. My people. My people. Let's talk about this is a short while. This ties into the messages I I have taught and been teaching concerning the way, the path, instruction, and correction, chastisement, temptation, that we may yada, know the ways of Yahweh, His path. So it speaks here in my closing. The ways of Yahweh, this is His ways. Starting here in Proverbs and ending in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians. So it says here in Proverbs, Mishli, chapter 8, verse 32 says this. As Yahweh exhorts us by wisdom to hear, Yisrael, to know, Yada. This is the words of Yeshua HaMashiach.
Mashiach. Now therefore hearken to me, O you children, for blessed are they that keep your ways. No. Your mama's ways. No. Your father's ways. My father taught me this. No. Whose ways? Hearken unto me, O children of Israel, Yael, for blessed are they that keep my ways. See, we are so set in our ways and the ways of our parents, our forefathers, that we can't even know the ways of Yah. We don't want to learn and understand the ways of Yahweh, His patterns. His Shabbat. His feast days. His times. Learning how to understand and yada know the moon. The seasons. All of these things. It's what makes us his people. He says, my people. My people. Keep my ways. Hear instruction. Well, my daddy taught me this, well, daddy was wrong. When my mama showed me this way, well, according to Torah and his ways, she was wrong. Yahweh has placed men before us that will cause us to search deeply for those, the leaven and the sin that is within us. Because it speaks of more than just what mama taught, what daddy taught, or what I learned in Christianity, or even Israelitism. Yahudaism, whatever you want to say, any kind of schism or ism, as Aak would say, Shimri, but not the ways of Yahweh. We must walk in all of Yah speaks my ways. They're his ways. Yes, right here. We must understand this. And when Torah speaks and points to and proves his way, why do we resist? Why do we fight? We want to carry on the tradition. What tradition? Can mother and father, friend, brother be wrong? Of course. Let every man be a liar. But let Yahweh be truth. We don't want to let him be truth, Israel. He is truth. He is life. He is light. But we must walk in his way. He said, these are my ways. Mishli. 8.32 says, Now therefore hearken to me, O you children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. You look back and you wonder why you're still where you are. Two, three, ten years ago, you're doing the same thing. Saying the same thing. Thinking the same way. We do not progress. Knowledge increases, but not the wisdom. Look, come on. We don't learn from our mistakes and our ways. That we may know y'all die his way. He said, these are my ways, as I continue. Look what he says here in verse 33. Here instruction. Instructions are the way. It's the path of life, Israel. Is. It just doesn't start with daddy and mama. Start with the Zakain and the Emein. It continues in truth. It goes on. It moves on. We don't want to move on. That's why we'll always remain where we are in this place. This mindset. Our understanding. Because we're not walking in my ways, as Yahweh says. Hear instruction. And be wise. And refuse it not. We refuse instruction and correction. We don't want to hear it because then we have to change. And we're afraid to change. We're afraid of perfection. And for perfection to come, you must get away, you must get rid of those things that are not perfect. 
And when even Yahweh and his foreknowledge knew that there would be a renewed and a living way, and a, a, a covenant that he would make outside of the first covenant. Why? Because it was not perfect. Not that it was not perfect, but it was not complete. But yet he has made it complete and has sealed it with the testimony that the dawn of Yahshua. And then he moved from place to place, from knowledge and understanding. And he progressed continually every day. But yet we don't want to do that. Because we are comfortable. We don't want to move on. We don't want to move out of that comfortable zone. But for us to continue and to grow, Israel, just as you wear your shoes, you, wear, you can't wear the shoes you wore as a child. Come on. They're too small. It's too tight because you're growing and your feet are growing. So you have to progress to a size. You have to move up a size. And it's a continual thing, Israel, until you may reach maturity. And we have not reached maturity. There's always room for us to grow. For our feet to grow, our minds to grow, our hearts to grow, knowledge, understanding, wisdom. We have plenty of room for those things to grow, but you have to move out of that tight shoe size. We have bound and we have entangled our own selves, Israel, because we're afraid to grow. We don't want to grow. We're comfortable. But even in the comfort will become uncomforting, Israel. Because there are those, Israel, the nation, that are not bound by that kind of attitude and that kind of mindset, that kind of thinking, that will move on beyond where we are and where you are in Yahweh's ways. These are my ways. These are my paths. He says here. He said, refuse it not. Moving on to verse 34 in my closing. Then I'm going to read a few scriptures here in 1 Corinthians. He says, blessed is the man, a dog, that hears me watching daily at my gates. I taught a message concerning the gates, the door. So it even speaks of hook or wisdom that she lies at the door of the one that seeks her. We have stopped seeking. We have stopped looking. We have stopped desiring Israel in his ways. Moving on. Blessed is the Adam man that hears me watching daily at my gates. Look what he says. Waiting. Waiting. When you're waiting for something, your mind is always on that which you are being patient for. Whether you're patient or impatient, but you wait. Because you know that it's coming. You know that it will be here. It is a moment of time. It's on its way. You're waiting patiently. Because it's coming, Israel. He is coming. Israel. And he is here. Isn't that something? He's coming, but yet he's here. See, we must come unto him. Israel, that's what we must do. We have lost the way. We can't see the path. We have turned. We have shoed. Spun around where we are. We have blindfolded ourselves. This is a, what, pin the tail on a donkey, whatever. They put a blindfold over your eyes and spin you around and around and around. You don't know where that donkey is to pin the tail. And we go everywhere trying to pin the tail on the donkey because we cannot see and we have lost our way. Well, Yahweh doesn't play games, Israel. He corrects us, he instructs us for a reason. That we may yada, that we may know him, that we may shema, that we may hear old Israel when Yahweh speaks unto us. But here we are playing games, trying to pin the tail on truth and pin the tail on this and that, Israel. When Yahweh directly instructs us in his way. He said, whoso finds me, finds life, and shall obtain favor of Yahweh. 
But he that sins against me, denies my way, my path, want to play, continue playing, pin the tail of the donkey. He wrongs his own nephews. It's no one's fault. If we have not grown, then we're not growing up. Then we're not moving on, as the old condition would say, faith to faith in Yahshua. Instead of taking nice strides, we're not even taking baby steps. As a matter of fact, we're not going anywhere. As my Avant would say, we're just marking time. We're marching in one place and not moving forward in the battle and the fight, Israel. There should always be a progression forward in the battle that you may overcome the enemy, that you may gain territory, that you may gain property. That you may be able to, to name the property, to, 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 to proclaim and to lay claim to that property. That's what Yahweh wants us to do, Yisrael Yael. But he that sins against me wrongs, not me, not his neighbor, not his brother, not his sister, but his own nephesh. All that I hate me, love death. And we love death because we just don't. Know how to. We don't have a Yahweh. And we hear this all the time, Israel. As I read, Yahweh said, those that Ahava me, they walk in all of my ways. All of my ways. And those that hate me, they love death. We have loved death because we have hated Yahweh, Israel. It must be the other way around. Let us shoot tonight. Let us turn unto him. You have questions about something? Seek the understanding of that thing. Listen. Study yourself. Learn. Yahweh will not keep anything from us that is for our tongue, our understanding, and our growth, Israel. And Yahweh has placed those in our lives that we hear, that we listen, that we may grow, and that we may understand, and that we may move on. In that growth. Into a new pair of shoes. Something that fits nice. You have room to grow. You're not bound. You're not happening in any way Israel. That's what Yahweh had to do. For us. Out of Israel. Out of Egypt. He had to open up a way that we could go. That we could learn and serve him. And give him todah. And praise him. Keep his feast days. That we offer. Of the Zabat, the offering unto him daily of praise until die. We chose to be bound in that shoe, that little shoe size, because we don't want to grow. Israel. But those that are his, my people, they will grow, they will mature, and they will be strong until we see him. And beyond that, Israel. We shall be like him. We will see him as he is, Israel, and we shall be like him. I want to bring this to a close tonight, this eve. Here in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, 16 and 17, I want to read as I bring this to a close. Yahweh Baruch, you all may strengthen you on this yom. Get plenty of rest. Prepare your minds and your hearts. As we enter into the bed, call Israel. Yeah, in the house of Yahweh, where his name is written. Hallelujah. Again, excuse me, Saul speaks here, 1 Corinthians 4, uh, 16 and 17, because we must follow. That's the problem. We don't want to follow those that have wisdom and understanding. We don't want to follow us, but we don't want to follow anybody. What is that? You're not a follower, and you're surely not a leader. Because the leader will follow. There's always a leader. Because the leader always follows. The leader. Think on that one. Hallelujah. Again, 1 Corinthians 4 16 says, Therefore I beseech you, be you followers of me. Yahshua speaks. For in this cause I have sent to you, to Motia. He sends those unto us. We, we, we totally miss, we believe we're the ones, but because we can't follow, we'll never be able to lead. 
You never go to Lee because you don't know how to follow. He says, For this cause I have sent to Mothia, who is my beloved son, and faithful in Yahweh, who shall bring you into remembrance of what? My ways. Yahweh has sent those before us, just like Timothea, that we will be in remembrance of, he says, my ways, which be in Yahshua HaMashiach. See, we don't believe that there are those that will lead us in the ways of Yahshua HaMashiach, because we believe we're the ones that are leading. Because we don't know how to follow. You will never be a leader if you cannot follow Israel. He says, even here to Mothia, who is my well beloved and faithful in Yahweh, who should bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Yahshua HaMashiach, I teach as I teach everywhere in everything is where you are. So I pray that your lad be encouraged as he continues to teach us and to show us not our ways, but his way. And if we will delight in him, that he will direct us in the path that we must go. I want to say Shabbat Shalom to you all. May Yahweh continue to strengthen you. May he keep you, Yisrael. May you be encouraged in these days, this last time. No room for disencouragement. Sure, there'll be highs and lows as we travel, as we traverse this life, but we have no need to be ashamed. We have no need, Israel, to be dismayed. Because it is Yahweh that leads us. It is Yahweh that guides us in His ways. He said, these are my ways, these are my paths. You are my people. So I want to say Shabbat Shalom. You all may Yahweh Baruch you, may he strengthen you, and may he keep you. Get some rest, Israel, in him on this yom. Rest your bodies, rest your minds, in the comfort of the promises of Almighty Yahweh, that he will lead us in his ways. Yahweh Baruch, Shabbat Shalom.